My friends, my pilot friends, pilot candidates, my students and all of you, welcome to my channel again. I know I have been far away from you for a long time because of the airline entry processes, but don't worry, I'll prepare and edit videos again in English and share with you. As I mentioned to you in my previous videos, I took my whole pilot training process on video. In addition to these, I decided to share videos with technical information in general. For example, we will start with aerodynamics such as lift, weight, thrust and drag and of course under many topics. These videos will be so useful that they will help you at PPL, ATPL and in whole pilot training process even maybe later. This video series will be about aerodynamics. Aerodynamics is the study of how gases interact with moving bodies. Because the gas that we encounter most is air, aerodynamics is primarily concerned with the forces of drag, lift, which are caused by air passing over and around solid bodies. Everything moving through the air, including airplanes, rockets and birds, is affected by aerodynamics. First of all, let's understand what airfoil is. It's called in airfoil in American English. If you ask why airfoil, because in modern airplanes, not only wings, but also all of other sections or parts that affect lift, drag, thrust, and weight forces are called airfoils. An airfoil is the term used to describe the 2D cross-sectional shape of an object. As you can see on the screen, it's often said that it's like a drop of water, but its curves and design may vary slightly. They are designed to give the best lift-drag ratio of the object in the airflow. It creates an aerodynamic force when moving in a fluid such as air. Let's talk briefly about the airfoil because we will need these details soon. The geometry of the airfoil is described with a variety of terms. The chord line is an imaginary straight line drawn between leading and trailing edge of an airfoil. The distance between the leading and trailing edge of a wing measured along the chord line is the chord length or more simply the chord. That is the reference dimension of the airfoil section. The leading edge is the point at the front of the airfoil that has maximum curvature which has got minimum radius. Let's say the part of the wing that first contacts the air. The trailing edge is defined similarly as the point of maximum curvature at the rear of the airfoil. The shape of the airfoil is defined using the following geometrical parameters. The mean camber line is the locus of points midway between the upper and lower surfaces. Its shape depends on the thickness distribution along the cord. The thickness of an airfoil varies along the cord. It may be measured in either of two ways. Thickness measured perpendicular to the camber line and thickness measured perpendicular to the cord line. Airfoils provide thrust as a wing or propeller blade in aircraft. These forces are generated perpendicular to the airflow. For airfoils, wings, propeller blades, winglets, fins, vertical tail, horizontal tail planes, helicopter rotor blades can be given as examples. Let's examine it again on the plane and see how similar they are. First of all, 
Let's look closely at the wing profile that most closely resembles the water drop. As you can see, the bottom side is flat. When we look from the side or from the front, the front part is oval in shape and descending sharply towards the back. The closer we look, the more clearly we can see. Our plane's Cessna 170 Skyhawk is identical to the real one. The design of all high-wing aircrafts is almost identical. When we get into the plane, we can see the fold design in the leading edge more clearly from the root of the wing. If any not flying at the moment, hopefully soon when they fly, they will say, ah, its inside is the same as Captain John shows. <laughs> in the meantime, the holes there are used for cabin ventilation. We provide cold or let's say fresh air from there because there is no air conditioning in those aircrafts. Let's look at it from outside. In the meantime, I removed the paint so that we focus only on airfoils. Especially when you look from above, you can easily see that the wings and horizontal tail or horizontal stabilizer are made with the same design. And from the side, it looks very clear that vertical stabilizer or tail is made with a similar design. Helicopters, for example, are also referred to as rotary wing aircrafts because the rotating parts on top are called rotary wings or rotor blades. When we look closely, it creates an upward lifting force with the direction of rotation and the special design in that direction. It's clearly an airfoil design. Let's remember the reason again. This shape is designed for the minimum drag while it creates best lifting. Airfoil, with the most simple description, is a body that produces an aerodynamic response to the vertical of its direction of movement with a small drag. Let's take a look at our most basic forces, which we have just mentioned, that keep our plane in the air and make it move forward. Lift, weight, thrust and drag. As we can see in the figure, the direction of the effect of these four forces is very clear. We will examine these four forces one by one. First of all, even if thrust, which enables us to gain speed, and lift, which enables us to take off, climb and stay in the air seem to be the most important. These four forces are completely interconnected. I'll tell you the details of each one. For example, when we consider the lift force, the first thing that comes to our mind is due to what and how much lift force should be applied. This depends first on the weight. The greater the weight, the more lifting force is required. Likewise, more thrust is required as drag increases. There are cases where they are all connected. I'm going to touch on all of them one by one. First, let's look at the lift. Lift is the force that holds our aircraft in the air. Airfoil, the wing profile, manages to hold in the air by the lift force generated due to its structure. This lifting force is based on which principle? Of course, the principle of Bernoulli. According to Bernoulli, the higher the velocity of a fluid, the lower its pressure. Based on this principle, the airfoil, which we call the wing profile and is similar to a water drop, was designed according to this principle for airplanes. As our plane moves 
lifting force is created by passing air flow around this profile. Because the wing profile has got an oval shape at the leading edge towards the upper side and the flat at the lower side, the incoming airflow will pass directly from the bottom side. The velocity does not change, but the air that will pass through the top side should go faster to the place where it will combine with the airflow at the bottom side. According to the Bernoulli principle, the airflow above will be faster than the airflow below and the pressure will be lower. As a result, the higher pressure below creates an upward lifting force. Thus, our plane clings to the air. Again, because the airflow going from above will be faster, low pressure will occur and the air flowing from below will be slower, higher pressure will occur. In its most brief form, lifting force occurs due to the pressure difference created by the airflow passing over and below the wing profile. In this section, we use the wing profile and the state of our plane as it went straight, but many of you are wondering if the lift force is taking place, why is the plane going straight here? These sounds come to my ear. Okay, when you search Google about lift, this wing profile is described as looking up a little higher, but the reason for this is not seen in many web pages. If you want the plane to climb, then we increase the pressure difference to increase the lift. We do this by increasing the angle of attack. Let's look at what angle of attack is. Angle of attack in aerodynamics is the angle between oncoming air or relative wind and the cord line or let's say reference line on the airplane or wing. We can also say the angle between the direction of movement and the cord line. Here we see that we increase the pressure difference by increasing the angle of attack, this increases lift. Lift increases as angle of attack increases, but stall occurs after a certain degree. Therefore, according to the speed and design of each aircraft, critical angle of attack shouldn't be exceeded. When we look at lift alone, it doesn't mean much. So let's talk about the lift weight relationship. If the aircraft does not climb or descend, lift and weight are equal. If lift and weight are equal, the aircraft maintains its attitude and flies steadily. Technically, this situation is called steady and level attitude. As you can see from the attitude indicator, the status of our aircraft appears to be zero at the horizon. Now you're guessing. If the opposite happens, that is the weight more than the lift, the plane cannot hold in the air. If the lift more than the weight, as you would expect, our aircraft tends to climb. Technically, we call it nose-up attitude. To summarize, we introduced aerodynamics in this video. Although we focus on lift, we also talked about weight, thrust, drag, forces. In the next video of this series, we will examine the relationship between thrust and drag more closely. Of course, we will add effects of lift and weight when we examine them. Hopefully, it has been a useful video for you. If you have any questions or positive or negative criticism, please contact me at the bottom of our videos or on social media accounts. And of course, don't forget to 
follow me on my YouTube channel and social media accounts. And don't forget to like and share my videos. I wish you safe flights. Your Captain John.